So let's start by multiplying these two binomials together. How did we do that? Double distribute. So we did 2x times x, and we got 2x squared. Then we did 2x times 1 to get 2x. Then we took 3, multiplied it to x, and then 3, and multiplied it to 1. What did we do after that? Yeah. What did we do after that? We combined like terms, so the middle terms here, we add together to get 5x, and we brought it down. So when we think about doing this backwards, we have to think about how we got each part of our trinomial. <clears throat> so the 3, we got that by multiplying the last two numbers together. So the 3 and the 1, the last two in each binomial. We got the 2x squared by multiplying the first two. And then how did we get the 5x? We got that by adding the product of the outside two and the inside two. So when we work backwards, we're gonna have to use what, how we got them to figure out how to work backwards. Okay, does everyone see how we got each term in our trinomial? Yes or no? Okay, so if we're gonna look at something like this one here, number one, and work backwards, I know that the five m squared, let's see, so I'm just gonna put two parentheses here. I know that I got five m squared by multiplying the first two terms in each binomial. So what are some possible numbers that we could put there? Yeah. Uh, 5m times m, m. 5m times m. That will give us 5m squared. <clears throat> okay, now we also know that the last term we get from multiplying the last two numbers. So that means numbers that go here and here have to multiply to 6. 3 and 2. And then how do we, now we need to check to see if our middle term is correct. And how did we get our middle term? By adding the product of the outside and inside. So we're gonna multiply here and multiply here and add up our answers. So 3m plus five times two is 10. So three and 10, does that give us negative 17? No. So when that happens, you go, okay, this one's not gonna work. Can you think of another way to arrange it? So there's a little bit of guess and check here. Chase? Six and one. Six and one. Okay, so let's try. Six and one. So five M 6m, that's 11m. Did we get to our 17? Not quite. So that one doesn't work. Okay, can you think of any others? Okay, I think we've hit all the factors of 6, but what about putting them in, the, in a different order? So what if I switch 3 and 2? What if I put the 2 here and the 3 here? 
They still multiply to 6, but we're just changing their location. What's 2 times m? 2m. 5m times 3? Does that add up to 17? Yeah. Now, how do we get negative 17? Because ours, do, ours does need to be negative 17. But they still have to make, multiply to a positive. So how do we get things that are negative to multiply to a positive? Double. Double negative. So let's make them both negative. So we have negative 2, negative 15 adds up to negative 17. This here is your answer. Okay, so we're gonna we're working backwards by trying to answer and make sure all three of these conditions up top are satisfied. There is some guess and check to it. So one of the things that um, I'll do, and I'll do it a little better than I did on number one, but I'll show you how you can just kind of list them out so it's not taking up as much room, because I all know you guys like to save space on your papers. Um, but the, this is the basic idea. You're checking that the inside two product and the outside two product add up to your middle term, and you get the first two as products of your first term. The last two come from products of your last term. Okay. So let's try number two. So our first term is x squared. How do we get x squared? x times x. Okay, what about 12? Okay, so we have, now instead of writing it here, I'm going to write 2 and 6. I heard 3 and 4. Any others? 4 and 3, good. So you can switch their order or 6 and 2. So then what we can do is again we're trying to, th the 2 will get multiplied to the x, the x here will get multiplied to the 6. So if we have 6x and 2x, would that work? Is that 7? Mm -mm. Okay, so we know that one's not going to work. So here we'll have 4x and 3x. Is that 7? Yeah, so if we do 3 and 4, we'll get 4x, 3x, which is our 7x. That's our answer. Okay, what about number 3? So we get a squared by a and a. So if you want, you can just put ones down here. And then how do we get 24? Six times what? Four. Six times four, how else? Four. Actually, let's just do this. Four, if we were to multiply these, we'd have four a plus six a. Is that 10 a? Yeah. yeah, so then let's not go any further. So if you want to just list them out until you get one, that works. That way you don't have to list out all of them. Um, but one of the things, and I want you guys to be aware of, don't erase the things you've tried. Because otherwise, how are you going to remember if you tried it or not? Because like 24, how many factors does 24 have? You had 6 and 4, 12 and 2, 8 and 3, and then you have all of those flipped in order. So that's six different options. So keeping track of them, until you get one that works will just help you kind of remember which ones you've already tried. Okay, how are we doing so far? Yeah. Not no. Not all, not when it's a one and both when they're both ones the order doesn't matter. And even in, um, like in number one and in, in number one, if I had put m first and 5m here, I would have had to put the negative 2 here and the negative 3 here. So it's not, the order your parentheses are in doesn't matter as long as what's inside is correct. So like here, I could have written m minus 3 
times 5n minus 2, and it still would have been correct. Okay. All right. Any other questions at this point? Because we're about halfway through the notes. Okay, so let's try number four. So how do we get 4x squared? 4x and x. Okay, so let's try 4x and x. And how do we get negative 5? So what two things multiply together to give us negative 5? Five? 5. What? Sorry. 5 and negative 1. Okay, 5 and negative 1. And I need it to add up to negative 19. So if I did my outer two, negative 4x plus 5x, do I get negative 19? No. So what's something else we can try? What was that, Gideon? Switch the order. Switch the order. So put the negative 1 here and the 5 here. Okay, yep. so that would give us negative, tw or sorry, positive 20 and negative 1x. Positive 20 and negative 1 would give us positive 19. So we're close, but we need negative 19. Change the 5 to negative. So keep the s numbers in the same spots, but change the 5 to negative. Negative 20 and positive 1 gives us negative 19. So 4x plus 1, x minus 5. And there would be your answer. How can we check these if we're ever not sure if we did it right? Double distribute and make to make sure you put things in the right spot. Because something that's pretty common is that we get the right numbers, but we don't always put them in the right spot. So it should be whatever is at the end of your list is what goes into the parentheses of that spot. Okay. <clears throat> okay, let's try number five. So again, I'm going to put my parentheses. So let's start with some factors of 12c squared. 6c. 6c. And 2c. Okay, what about negative 5? 1 and f negative 5. Okay, so let's try it. Negative 30, 30c, plus 2c. Does that give us 11? No. Okay, so what's something else we can try? Keep them in the same spot or switch them? Switch them. So make the 5 positive and the 1 negative. So negative 6c, 10c. Is that, ne is that 11? No. Chase? OK, so 12 has a lot of other factors. So you can also switch up 6 and 2. So what other one would you want to try? Three and, four. three and four. So three C and four C. Okay, so let's try it with those combinations of five that we already have. So three, we'd have negative 15 plus 20. Does that work? Negative 15 plus 20, is that 11? No. So then what about negative three and 20? Mm -mm. Yeah? Make the one negative. Do we keep them in the same order as the first one? Okay. But make the one negative and the five positive. So this negative and this one positive. Okay. Are we going to use the three and the four or the six and the two? The six and two. Six and two. So six times five is 30. One times two is negative two. Sorry, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. So that's still a little too big. 30 is a little too big. Chase? Uh, I lost it. You lost it. Three, 
Um, flipping, because we you only really want to flip one column, because otherwise you're going to be repeating. So like if we hadn't flipped the five and the one, then yeah, I could say we flipped the six and the two. But you only really need to do one, otherwise you're multiplying the same things. 12 Try 12 and one. So let's see, negative 60 and negative one. That's a big no. Negative 12, let's see, hold on. Negative 12, positive 5, or 60 and negative 1. Hmm. Any other options you see or can think of? You have one? Yeah. Um, 3C minus 1 and 4C plus 5. 3C minus 1 and 4C plus 5. 15 minus 4. So 15 minus 4 would give us our 11. So that was the one we just had, we needed to try this one, but with the 5 and the 1 switched. So 3C minus 1, 4C plus 5. Good catch, Rosemary. So some of these do take some thought and some trial and error and really messing around with the order of numbers and sometimes even messing around with negatives. That's why we're going to spend all week doing this, because there is a lot of thought to this. Okay? Do I expect you to be 100% I got it today? No. Okay, we're, that's why we're doing it all week. Okay, last one here. How do we get n squared? 1n times 1n. <clears throat> okay, what about 18, negative 18? negative 3 and positive 6, so 6n minus 3n, we get our positive 3, and that would be our final answer. So usually the more factors of numbers you have, like 12 had a lot of factors. That means we have a lot of combinations. That, those are usually considered the ones that are a little harder and involve more thought, because there's a lot more options. When you have numbers that don't have a lot of factors, you tend to be able to do them a bit quicker. So for right now, um, listing them out to help you keep track is going to be helpful. Now, eventually, should you be able to or could you be able to do this in your head? Yes. Okay, because all we're doing is multiplying and adding. So if you can multiply and add in your head, go for it. Do I expect you to be able to do it right now? Maybe not. but eventually you should be able to get there. Okay, so at this point, are there any questions you have on how we did any of them? Robert? You multiply the outside two and the inside two. And it has to add up to your middle term. So from up here, you're adding the product of the outside two and the inside two to get that middle number. And so again, if it helps you to just rewrite each binomial rather than trying to go back and forth, rewrite each one just to make sure you've checked off all your possible options. Okay. Any other questions you have at this point? 